GKE provides built-in functionality to help you optimize your Kubernetes clusters. So let's dive right into it. We'll take a look at these features through the eyes of two GKE clusters, one standard and one autopilot. Let's start by visiting the cost optimization tab from our clusters page in the console. In this tab, we can see a time series visualization for our GKE clusters, in which we get detailed information about resources across clusters in a project. In this case, starting with CPU across all standard clusters. For any given time over a customizable time window, in this case, one month, we can see the total allocatable CPU across all of our standard clusters, the amount of CPU actually requested by pods running in those clusters, and the amount of CPU actually used by these pods. We can also see bar charts below to show us what usage, requests, and allocatable resources looked like over that defined time window. Now this information can definitely help us understand how efficiently we bin pack our workloads onto nodes in our cluster. But what it can also do is give us insight into scale down efficiency. For example, we can use the time filter to take a look at a specific window in which we had a scale up event. So let's take a look at this one. Now we can see that while we added nodes during the scale up of pod requests, we could have gotten better cluster utilization by prioritizing scale down after usage had stabilized. Information like this can help us make optimization centric decisions, like implementing the optimized utilization profile for cluster autoscaler, which was not enabled in our cluster during this time window. A change like that will not only help cluster autoscalers spin down underutilized nodes better, but it'll also give preference to scheduling pods on nodes with more usage to improve cluster bin packing. We can also get the same visualization for memory across our standard clusters as well. In this case, we can see that our clusters still have a bunch of unallocated memory. With this data, we can think about optimization decisions like choosing machine types with less memory in our clusters. The time series visualization also supports GKE autopilot clusters. One of the core differences between GK standard mode and GK autopilot mode is the fact that Google manages your underlying node infrastructure in autopilot. Thus, it handles the amount of allocatable resources for you in the cluster. So in this model, you don't pay for infrastructure used or idle, but rather you pay for your pod requests. Thus, our optimization efforts focus on whether or not pods are using the resources that they request. As you can see across both memory and CPU, there is opportunity to perform workload right sizing. That is, adjusting pod requests to reduce resource waste while still requesting what the pod needs to function. Not only does this cost optimization tab show us data on resource utilization across clusters, but it also links us directly to its financial implications, as each cluster I've shown you here has GKE cost allocation enabled, which is integrated with cloud billing. When we click on View Billing Reports, we're navigated to cloud billing with information about the cost of our clusters. However, in many cases, clusters house many workloads across multiple teams. What if we want to understand costs at a more granular level that can help us identify areas to optimize? With GKE cost allocation, we can filter billing data down to the cost of pod requests by namespace or labels across our clusters. In this case, I'm filtering based on namespaces. This is yet another reason to double check that you're using namespaces and labels to logically organize and identify teams and services in your clusters. Another helpful bit here is that we can also see the cost of unallocated resources in our cluster. This cloud billing data can also be exported to BigQuery and it includes all GCP resources, not just GKE. This means you can do things like write SQL queries to parse not only what a team's workloads are costing in GKE, but also backing and stateful services those workloads might consume outside of GKE, like Cloud Memory Store, Cloud SQL, etc. A sensible next step, once we reviewed some of this information at the macro level, is to get more granular. So let's navigate to the Cost Optimization tab in the Workload section of the GKE console.
For simplicity's sake, let's filter this view down to our standard cluster. This tab gives us helpful cost optimization data per workload in which we can see similar time series and bar graph visualizations to understand how workload usage relates to their requests and limits over a defined time window. So let's review each one by one. We'll start with our alpha workload. Our alpha workload uses about 50% of its requested resources, but only about a quarter of its memory requested resources. It's an opportunity to perhaps reduce requests across both, but especially memory. Our beta workload is also around 50% of its CPU requests. But this time, its memory usage well exceeds its requests. This is noted here by our yellow bar graph. This is an opportunity to not only set requests higher, but as you can see, we don't have any limits set for memory, but we should. Without limits, this workload can consume too much memory on a node that could create out-of-memory problems for other workloads on that node. Our delta workload is unfortunately representative of a common problem, workloads without requests or limits set. This creates the same noisy neighbor problem of workloads consuming too much of a node's resources, but it also does not help us at all when it comes to cluster bin packing. After all, the cluster can bin pack as good as our requests are when they are set. Finally, we see the gamma workload, in which we have an opportunity to increase the CPU resource request amount, but we also see in its memory usage what the bar graph looks like when we have limits appropriately set, as our limit here is defined by the gray. This data can help us implement cost optimization as part of a cultural shift, in which cluster admins work with service owners to adjust these requests not only to course correct, but also to implement best practices and standards moving forward around requests and limits. As teams work together, GKE bubbles up easily accessible information that can help them in workload right sizing. So let's take a look at our beta workload in which we can see some of Vertical Pod Autoscaler's recommendations directly in the console. VPA's recommendations are based on the workload's historical and current usage. We can start by taking a look at the Actions menu, navigating to Scale, and selecting Edit Resource Requests. Here, with the green lines denoted by the star icon, we can see recommended values to set for CPU and memory requests. If you remember, our beta workload's memory usage well exceeds its requests. So we can see that reflected in the recommendation to increase our memory requests. Let's now take a look at the alpha workload. For workloads with HPA based on a usage threshold of CPU, like the alpha workload here, Changing CPU requests in isolation can have unintended effects, thus no recommendation is provided. However, we do still get a recommended value to set for memory requests. This data can help teams work in tandem to workload right size in order to yield better cluster optimization at large. Now this functionality covered up to this point is great for teams already running GKE clusters. But what about for those who are looking to get started with GKE on the right foot with cost optimization top of mind? If you're creating your first GKE cluster and want to be set up for success in optimization, we have a couple ways in the console to help. The first is our setup guide for a cost optimized GKE standard cluster in which we have a wizard that you can use to create your cluster using a template in the UI. This template includes a lot of the things we talked about today, cluster auto-scaling with the optimized utilization profile, vertical pod auto-scaling, GKE cost allocation, but of course, the wizard also allows you to make certain changes you need for your cluster. If you prefer to use the console and configure your cluster bit by bit, we'll also provide estimations into what your cluster might cost as you build it out. If you plan on auto-scaling your cluster, 
we provide a slider that will give you an idea of the range of the cost of your cluster as it changes due to demand. As we conclude, I'd like to reiterate that optimization is a team effort between cluster admins, workload owners, and even billing managers. An effort that must continuously happen as new workloads onboard and existing workloads change. As we saw in this tour, GKE provides many pieces of built-in features to help you in your journey to optimize your GKE clusters. To learn more, check out the links in the description below. My name is Anthony Bouchon, and thank you for your time.